More Oregon counties will move down in COVID risk levels, but others are going the other way. Sorry, Clackamas County, still no change for you after all this time. They will stay at high risk. Harney County in southeast Oregon is moving from low up to moderate because of increasing cases. Counties in green are low risk, yellow is moderate, and orange is high. KGW's Bryant Clifford joining us with what counties need to do to move to low risk. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Nina. In order for these counties to move to lower risk, they need to have a vaccination rate of 65%. They also need to have an equity plan that shows how they will vaccinate vulnerable populations, like older people who can't get to clinics. Now, locally, Clackamas County needs to vaccinate around 7,000 more people to move to lower risk. Marion and Columbia counties also remain at high risk due to lower vaccination levels. In all, the new risk levels put 21 counties in lower risk, 4 in moderate risk, and 11 at high risk. When a county does move to the lower risk level, that means restaurants, bars, theaters, and gyms can be at 50% capacity, and retail stores can be at 75%. Once 70% of Oregonians uh, 16 and older get at least one dose of the vaccine, the governor said she would lift most restrictions for all counties. Right now, Oregon is just under 67%. And a reminder, if you're going camping or you're traveling this weekend, you need to make sure you know which county, uh, which risk level your county is in. Also, this goes into effect on Friday. Back to you guys. Brian, I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to the non-train version of that report coming up uh, next hour. Here is where the vaccination rate stands right now in Oregon. More than 67% of adults in the state have gotten at least one shot, but again, the pace is slowing down. So the bottom line, Bryant just mentioned this. Once Oregon reaches 70%, restrictions will be dropped statewide and county risk levels will go away. Now, even though this rate has slowed down, Multnomah County's health officer says there are still people out there who are willing to get the shot. Dr. Jennifer Vine says to get those people vaccinated, health officials will have to work a little bit harder. I think we're reaching people who are fine to get a vaccine if it's convenient, uh, if they know um, that, for example, they're, they're not gonna miss a lot of work because of side effects from the vaccine. Um, I think it needs to be in their neighborhood in a, in a language that's familiar to them um, and with vaccine education delivered in a way that makes sense to them. Dr. Vines and state health officials say that we're starting to see two pandemics, one that's ending for vaccinated folks and one that's spreading among people who are not vaccinated. So now the question is, how will the state try to get more people vaccinated? Pat Doris takes a look at the vaccine incentives that are being offered right now. About 5,000 new people statewide a day are getting the anti-COVID vaccine, and so that is a number that is something that the state leaders are trying to move because the governor has said there's about 97,000 people left to hit that 70% mark. The 70% mark's important because she has said that's the number at which she will make all the COVID, almost all the COVID uh, restrictions go away. And that's 70% of 18 year olds and above in Oregon getting at least one shot. So we're getting there, but we're not there yet. And at the rate of 5,000 a day, eh, it's gonna be like the last week of June. So there's a number of incentives that are being offered by governments, by health organizations and others. Um, the state of Washington just had its first $250,000 drawing. They're gonna have a series of those. The idea is to get people excited and have it grow. State of Oregon has a million dollar drawing, but not till uh, late June. Uh, so that's still a ways off and that's really not having much of a bump right now. Kaiser Permanente just announced they're gonna have a drawing for a thousand people across the eight states in which they have operations. And by the way, here in Oregon, if you got your vaccine at the Oregon Convention Center or you do still now go and get it, uh, you can be qualified for that Kaiser drawing, even if you're not a Kaiser member. That's pretty cool, huh? And then we're also starting to see a lot more fire departments and health centers just have clinics that are available. So if you're having trouble scheduling going to um, a vaccination site into your day, you can just drive by, see that there's a vaccination event going on. Probably it's Johnson & Johnson. It's a one-shot deal. You drop in, you get vaccinated. All these efforts are in the hopes that more people will get vaccinated more quickly, which protects everybody's health, but also gets Oregon to that 70% mark quicker.
That's what's going on. I'm Pat Doris. All right, here are some local headlines we're tracking this morning. The city of Portland has agreed to pay the family of a man killed by police in 2017. The Oregon Justice Resource Center says the family of Terrell Johnson reached a $600,000 settlement with the city. It still, though, needs to be approved by council. Johnson was killed at the Flavel Max station. His family says he was having a mental health crisis at the time. The grand jury report showed during a chase with Johnson, an officer tripped on a curb and fired the shots that killed him. The lawsuit from Johnson's family claims the officer violated policy during the chase. The grand jury found the officer justified in the shooting. Well, this woman was caught defacing the statue of York on Mount Tabor in Southeast Portland yesterday. A Twitter user posted these photos as he was biking by and witnessed it. The base is now covered in symbols and words, including love, not hate. The statue of York, who was a slave brought on the Lewis and Clark expedition, mysteriously appeared in February. No word if the person in the photos is facing any charges yet. The Republican field for next year's Oregon governor's race is getting crowded. On Tuesday, Medford business owner Jessica Gomez announced she's running. She's the first woman and only person of color to enter the 2020 race against Kate Brown so far. Salem doctor Bud Pierce and Sandy Mayor Stan Pulliam are also running, representing the GOP. No Democrats have entered the race at the moment. Kate Brown cannot run due to term limits. And those are your morning headlines. Right now, we want to bring you up to speed on some breaking traffic news this morning. This is a live picture. There's a crash on I-5 near the Terwilliger Curves. It has wow. shut down the northbound lanes for the foreseeable future. Now, photographer Eric Patterson is there on scene. He tells us a person is pinned in the SUV that you saw underneath that trailer. I mean, look at how large this expanse of work is going on. And you know how busy the T-curves get during the morning rush. Do you see rush. the car, though, under there? I do, wow, yes, absolutely. Crazy. So, you know, if you have not left home yet and you need to get around this area, maybe try Barber because, again, this work is ongoing. We're hearing that someone is pinned there in the SUV. We will stay on top of this throughout the morning commute. We'll give you updates as soon as they become available. Well, Mercy Corps Northwest wants to give away thousands of dollars to small local businesses and time is running out to apply. For Pride Month, it plans to give grants to six LGBTQ-owned businesses in Oregon and Washington. Each would get $1,000. To make it easier and cut down on paperwork, Mercy Corps is asking businesses to submit videos under three minutes sharing the story of how the businesses got there and the community that they serve. Our Galen Etlin asked about the program, which is new this year having queer owned businesses thriving and surviving in our community is essential. Why do you feel it's important to have that diversity in the community? For us, we are doing our job well when we are giving resources to those in the community who don't have equitable access to it, specifically those who have been boxed out of systems for decades and generations. Businesses have to be small. We're talking five people or fewer. The deadline to apply is this Sunday, June 13th at midnight. We have a link for you on KGW.com. Sports now and even more fans got to watch the Hillsboro Hops in action in person last night. That's right. The stadium now at 50% capacity. So the stadium has vaccinated only sections where fans don't need to social distance. Non-vaccinated fans, meanwhile, are still sitting in pods and other designated section of the stands. We spoke to two families last night. Both of them were taking their kids to their very first baseball game. It feels really good. We're having a good time. Um, lots of people are wearing masks, and but there's a lot of open space, so feel pretty safe. And we're excited to be out and get to enjoy the outdoors and love baseball, so it's exciting to be at the game. We should explain not every baseball game comes with the television interview, <laughs> but uh, those kids look like they were enjoying Packer it. Jacks. Uh, also, no one has to wear masks anymore in the stadium, but we did see some people who still chose to wear one. By the way,